today we're gonna kind of change the pace a little bit. I know you guys are used to my barn vlogs where everything's a little chaotic. I want to sit down and talk about something that I feel like a lot of people struggle with. Probably everyone that rides horses unless you are just like one of the rare humans that feel no fear. I feel like we all kind of struggle with this at times so I wanted to sit down and talk about confidence and what to do when you lose your confidence. To start this video off, I just want to say that for those of you that do struggle with confidence or you you know you might have just had a bad fall and lost your confidence, you are not alone. It is a perfectly normal feeling to be a little scared if you've had a bad fall. They are big animals that have minds of their own and as much as we try to like keep things safe and have things go positively sometimes it just doesn't work like that and things happen it doesn't make you any less of a rider to feel scared it just makes you human i'm first going to talk about a couple of instances where i've really lost my confidence the first really really big one that took a long long time to kind of feel better about and I think it's always going to be an issue throughout my life. If I would have just had a trainer that knew anything, I probably wouldn't have this issue, but that isn't the case. A long time ago when I was still a teenager, I had SLU and he got to where he was stopping really bad at the jumps and it, it just got so bad like he wouldn't even jump a cross rail for a while. So. Eventually, this lady that was kind of coaching me at a couple shows was like, you need to get his hawks done. And like, we had no idea what that meant, okay? Keep in mind, I didn't really have a trainer like at home to, you know, help me with these things. So that was a whole new world for us. Even after Slew got his hawks injected, things never really returned to normal with him. I don't think he ever like fully got through that like mental block with it even though it shouldn't have been hurting him anymore after we kind of took care of what needed to be taken care of with him it was just never the same so for a long time i would really really panic if i didn't know where i was at going to a jump because with slu he needed such an accurate ride otherwise he would stop so if you are a little long, a little short, anything besides a perfect distance, Slew is probably gonna stop, especially if the jumps were like over to six. So I would get really, really worked up about jumping and it's still kind of something that I struggle with. And like I said, it's probably something that's always going to be an issue because that's really a terrifying feeling and it's such a crappy thing to have to go through is to feel like you have to have a perfect ride to every fence, otherwise your horse is gonna stop. Some things that have helped me personally get comfortable jumping higher again without panicking about a distance are jumping bigger fences in a gymnastic or out of a line. This is much easier because the distance is already set and all you have to do is ride appropriately through the gymnastic or line. And for me, that was less intimidating than riding to a larger single fence. If you do have a horse that stops, definitely look into the reason behind their stopping because they don't just stop to be bad. Usually there's something pain related happening so definitely have a good vet come out and check them over and if there's nothing wrong with them then you may just need to make the jumps a little smaller and let the horse build their confidence horses don't just stop to stop like there's a reason behind it whether they are scared themselves or they're hurting i also just want to add that riding is as much as a mental sport as it is a physical sport a lot of things to do with riding or honestly just like training your brain to think a certain way and just get the right reaction from your brain. It's definitely not an easy thing to do. My second really big knock to my confidence was more recent. I believe it was 2019. I had a pretty bad fall off of a horse while we were at a horse show and 
I didn't even get a show. It was the day before the show. I was schooling this horse and he was like perfect the entire time. We did a couple jumps, felt great. I'm pretty sure this was going to be the last jump that I did on him and then I was gonna move on to the next horse. He, for whatever reason, just got really, really goofy on the back side of the jump. My reaction was not what it should have been just because I didn't expect him to get as carried away with it as he did. And I just didn't really like bother to sit up because I thought like he was just gonna kind of stay where he was at with his level of silliness and it just got a little more carried away. And because I didn't sit up, I ended up not being able to stay with him whenever he decided to just drop his shoulder and turn and run. I hit the ground really, really hard. I was in the worst imaginable pain after that fall. It was so, so bad. I ended up with this like huge hematoma on my leg that I had to have drained like three times. Although granted, after the first time, I didn't really follow instructions and stay off a horse for as long as I should have, so I kept making it fill back up with blood and I had to keep going back. And then finally, the third time, I decided to listen to the doctor. I had this huge, giant bruise too. I'll put some pictures because it was pretty gnarly. If you can imagine like how bad my leg felt just by the way it looked, my like upper body felt way worse. That's what took the front of the impact and like it took an entire month probably maybe even longer before i like could like really move like i was pretty much just like straight like this for a while like could turn like this but like my upper body just felt so so bad that fall really really took a toll on my confidence and i think it's just because of how much pain i was in after the fall i'm pretty used to falling off i've fallen off probably literally not exaggerating a thousand times in my life because they did a lot of stupid things when I was a kid. The past two years since that fall happened, I've really just been working on getting my confidence back to where it was at. It's been an incredibly slow and at times very frustrating process. There's been a lot of tears and moments where I was ready to give up. Since I had this fall that completely wrecked me at a horse show, Getting back into the show ring was terrifying. I had to really push outside of my comfort zone to get that done. There were times where I had to face what scared me the most, a horse getting playful after a jump and force myself to keep riding despite every ounce of me wanting to get off the horse and just feel safe. This is one of the deepest holes I've dug my way out of. From losing my confidence on a horse and hardly ever feeling comfortable riding, to then taking on too much for everyone else and forgetting to still make time to focus on my own riding, which resulted in really bad burnout. Things got really, really bad for a while. I love the horses and I love riding, so I kept showing up and fighting to get myself to a better place. It wasn't easy, but I started to make changes to my lifestyle so that I could get to where I wanted to be. I stopped doing so much for everyone else and started to give myself more opportunities. I focused on being more consistent, something that I really struggled with and I'm still working on. I tried to make sure the horses were jumping once a week instead of once a month. They started feeling better and I started feeling better too. The more you do something, the easier it gets. Thankfully, there's a lot of horses here, so once my consistency got better, I was jumping multiple times a week, which allowed me to start feeling like myself again. I started looking forward to jumping instead of dreading it, and I started to have fun putting the jumps up. I feel the best I've felt on a horse in a long time. Recovering from that fall and the burnout that followed was one of the hardest things I've ever done, but if you love something enough, then it's worth fighting for. There were setbacks along the way and there will be setbacks in the future, but if you keep showing up, there will be a way through them. Had I been more consistent with myself right off the bat and also had someone around to push me a little bit, I could have gotten through this fall a lot quicker than I did. I had some learning to do, and like everything else in my life, I've learned it the hard way. My advice to anyone who may be going through something similar is to first and foremost, have patience. Rebuilding anything doesn't happen overnight, especially when you're battling your own brain. That can take time. Go back to whatever level you need to and work your way back from there. There's no shame in going backwards to a place you feel comfortable. Write as consistently as possible and have someone around who can help push you out of your comfort zone when necessary.
for a while, especially after I fell. I didn't even really feel comfortable being on like a horse. I was okay being on the ponies just because they're closer to the ground, especially Marco. He's very, very reliable, and so I rode Marco a lot. He's kind of who I started like getting back into jumping with. It definitely sucked. It was kind of hard to be in that situation. Like my heart wanted to be on my own horses and like jumping them, but mentally I just wasn't ready to do that. That was a really, really big struggle, but thankfully I have like the best little lesson ponies for the most part. I mean, sometimes they kind of really make me mad because they're a little bratty. They are really good and they kind of stepped in and like helped me out in that time. I've never talked about how truly scared I was. I remember this time I was finally getting up the courage to ride the big horses outside. I was really, really scared to ride them outside. I was more comfortable inside, I think, just because I fell off outside, especially on like windy days. I would get very, very nervous because I felt like they were gonna act up in the wind. I was getting on cane, and this is like the first ride I was gonna have outside on one of the horses. And all I did was walk trot, and I stayed on him for like 10 minutes because I just wanted to like get myself out there and like have it go okay and you know thinking about Kane he's like probably one of the safest horses like he doesn't really get bothered by much although he's kind of been a little bit of a crazy boy lately I was I don't want to say shaking because I wasn't like shaking on the outside but I was shaking like on the inside I was just very nervous. Now I'll get on the horses and ride outside and jump outside and it's definitely way less of an issue. If you have to really go backwards after a fall, like sometimes that's just what you have to do. Everyone handles things differently. I think as long as you're willing to start somewhere and stick with it and have the willingness to push yourself a little bit when it's time to push yourself, you will get back to where you need to be. And now like this far after the fall, I'm doing a lot better. I even took Bacardi to our first rated show in like four years, a few months ago, and I'm just definitely in a way better spot than I was a few years ago. I think we all get kind of caught up in this idea that we should always be making forward progress. The reality is, is that nothing in life works like that. You can make some forward progress and then something happens like a fall or you know, you ride a horse that d just does something and it just scares you or, you know, whatever it may be and then you kind of go backwards or sometimes you're even just in a funk. Nothing really happened to ruin your confidence but you're just in a funk. <laughs> you're just in a funk, you're not yourself and you kind of lose some progress from where you were at. You keep working and you start making more progress and you get past the point where you were you know, before you lost your confidence or before you were in your funk or whatever, you know, whatever is going on. As much as it sucks, the hard things that we go through are necessary. We need them. If there's no sort of struggle to anything, then like, what's the point? If there's nothing that you have to overcome, then it's just very easy. And what's the point in doing that? My biggest advice, no matter why you've lost your confidence, is to just not be afraid to go back a couple steps or however far you need to go just to kind of get yourself on the horse and feel okay. It takes time. Don't be afraid to go backwards. Don't feel like if you go back and just kind of work on the basics for a while, then you're like given up or you're just not a good rider or you, you know, whatever you may tell yourself, sometimes that's just the necessary thing to do. And it's not going to hurt anyone at all to go back to basics. It's not going to hurt you to go back to basics. It's not going to hurt your horse to go back to basics. It is actually a very beneficial thing to do. So if that's what needs to happen, then that's what needs to happen. There's no point in trying to pick up right where you were after your fall or whatever if you are very scared because oftentimes that's just going to make things worse. If you can't ride to like the same height of jump confidently, 
that's going to affect your horse. I just think it would be really difficult to get through your mental block, not going backwards a little bit to where you kind of feel a little safer. I think it could definitely just end up causing way more issues and making you way more fearful than just doing what seems like is a slower approach by going backwards. Don't feel like because you ride horses, you have to be fearless. I was fearless as a little kid, but definitely now I'm way more timid. I second guess myself a lot. I'm not the most confident person and I still ride professionally. I still feel like I'm capable of training horses. My other piece of advice kind of goes hand in hand with what I just said, but just have some patience with yourself. You're having a normal human response. Most people get scared when they feel like they're going to die. There's the very rare individuals that just don't care. They don't feel fear the way the rest of us do. And that's fine. I'm jealous of them. Do not compare yourself with anyone else. If there's somebody at your barn that just had a fall too and they're doing more than you, that's, I mean, that's fine, good for them, but that doesn't have to be where you're at too. You need to do what you need to do. Sometimes it's easier to bounce back, especially depending on like how you fell, if you got hurt, etc. Things can definitely like vary and make your recovery time shorter or longer. Where you're at is where you're at and you don't have to be where somebody else is at. Last night on Instagram, I kind of asked if there are any questions pertaining to confidence and writing and all of that. There are some really good questions that I saw. I'm gonna take a minute and just kind of answer some of them. I would also definitely recommend reading some like sports psychology books. I know there's some that are like completely focused on writing. I will try and find a few of those and put them in the description. So that can be really, really helpful too because keep in mind, I am not a sports psychologist. I'm just kind of going off what has helped me and what I do with the kids that ride with me. The older you get, the more you realize how fragile everything in life is. It becomes way more apparent how easy it is for something to go like really, really wrong when you're on the back of a horse. And I'm not sure that there's a way to kind of get back to your confidence when you were younger. I wish there was. For me, when I was younger, I was definitely way more fearless than I am now. I think the biggest thing is just finding what works for you now and just accepting that who you were as a teenager or a kid is not who you are gonna be as an adult. It's definitely possible to still ride and ride well. You just have to find what works for your mind because really the fear and you know confidence and all of that is just kind of a mind game. Like that's really what it comes down to. You just kind of have to make your brain think you're safe, <laughs> even if you're not. This is another really good question. So for me, when I was a kid, as long as I wasn't actually hurt, like needed to go to the hospital type of hurt, I would always get back on like always get right back on right away. I've always been to where like I wanted to get back on the horse if I fell. Now like just being older, my body is usually just too sore to do it. At this point, obviously I know that like I'm going to continue riding. I'm way too invested in this to just quit because of a fall. So now I don't always get back on after I fall. For the kids that ride with me when they fall, Unless they are really, really badly hurt and need to go to the hospital and get looked at, make sure that nothing's broken or whatever, I do make sure they get back on before they leave the barn. I still try to make sure they have a few minutes to just kind of like breathe and make sure they do like truly feel okay because a lot of the times adrenaline can kind of hide pain. And if they do end up getting a little shaken up by their fall, we kind of sit down for however long they need and just kind of talk about what happened. I just tell them that like this is a part of it and it's okay if they're a little scared and if we need to just kind of take it easy the rest of the day, then that's fine. But they are going to get back on the horse before they leave. Especially, you know, when they're only riding like once a week or just maybe twice a week. 
they're not riding very often if they go home after a fall having not gotten back on the horse they have an entire week to sit with that and that really lets the fear build another thing that i like to remind the kids and i use this kind of little trick on myself too is if you have a fall i know it can be really really easy to get scared about it but just remind yourself how many times you get on the horse and you stay on and your ride goes to plan that hopefully should be happening way more times than you falling so you know like falls are not like the normal knock on wood with that but in short yes i do believe in getting back on after you fall thinking back to when i had my really bad fall and i myself was scared to be on a horse but i was still teaching kids i think it was easier for me to separate riding and teaching i was obviously kind of having my own struggles with riding and on my own like little personal journey with that that I don't think the kids really realize kind of how scared I was, but I don't think I ever really like struggled feeling confident teaching the kids. I do at times have like imposter syndrome where I just don't feel like I should be doing anything I'm doing, but that's a whole different thing. My way of thinking about this would be just because you are feeling scared to ride at the moment and you're dealing with your own confidence issues, doesn't mean that you don't know like what you are doing like it's one thing if you just straight up don't have the knowledge to be teaching but if you had something happen and you're just kind of struggling with feeling safe on the back of a horse those are two very different things it doesn't mean like you don't know what you're doing if you know what you're doing you know what you're doing regardless of how you're feeling on the back of a horse so if you know that like your kids are progressing and their riding is improving, then you're still doing your job. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. It makes sense in my head. This isn't really a question, it's more of just a statement. Falls are going to be a part of riding. They're always going to be a part of riding. This is going to be easier said than done, but just try and focus on like all of the positives and just have fun when you're riding and not constantly be stressed about having a really really bad fall that may or may not happen if you do have a bad fall that kind of wrecks your confidence there's ways to get through it definitely sucks and it's a lot of work and it takes a lot of time and patience but if this sport is what you love then i think it's worth doing I think this question is good just because I think there's probably a lot of people that kind of feel like they should be fearless. It's putting a ridiculous amount of pressure on yourself to be like a certain type of person if that's just not who you are. I don't think that's really like an attainable goal. My biggest suggestion instead of be trying to become fearless, you just find things that work for you and help you feel safer on the back of a horse. This is another really good question and I've actually seen a few people kind of ask similar things. It's definitely possible to lose your confidence with riding and not actually having to fall. I've definitely kind of been in some situations like that. I've seen it happen with the kids. Just, you know, sometimes things just happen and it just scares you. I think you should just definitely kind of try and pinpoint like what about your ride is scaring you and just see if there's anything that you can do to kind of take those problems that are happening away like if you have a spookier horse maybe a little lunge before you get on would be helpful or if it's something more related to like jump height or you know something that is kind of not directly related to the horse it may be helpful to kind of talk to your trainer about that and see if you could kind of go back down a height for like a lesson or two but it is definitely impossible to lose your confidence and not fall. I've been there. Something else that I know a lot of people get worried about is seeing the jumps go up. Even if it's just like a three inch difference, sometimes it can just look massive compared to the height that you were jumping. For me, something that helps, I don't do it all the time, but it definitely it kind of helps is if you put your jumps like at the top of the standards and just like flat horses with your jumps like all the way up so you kind of see like what that height looks like 
and then if you put them down even if it's a at a bigger height than what you would normally jump it tends to look a whole lot smaller so that can definitely be a good way to trick your brain and make yourself think that it's not as bad as it might seem if you were starting from a smaller jump and raising it up it it can help to see the jump go down This question right here is kind of exactly like where I was at when I had my really bad fall that I talked about earlier in this video. The horse that I fell off of is not the horse that I ended up getting back on the first time. I don't remember exactly, but I would be willing to put money that Marco was the first pony that I got back on. I don't think that that is necessarily important to get back on the horse that you fell off of if it really like messed with your confidence and you're really scared. I know that there is no way that I was getting back on that horse on my first ride back. If you're going to be like overly scared to do something like more scared than you can control, then I don't think there's any benefit to doing it. It's just going to make everything worse. If you're in the position to have a horse that you feel safer on, I definitely think getting on the horse that you feel safer on is going to be way more beneficial for your first few rides back. Honestly, however long you need, however long you are able to use a horse that you feel comfortable on, take it, do what you need to do. And I'm not saying to never get back on the horse that scared you, but definitely don't rush back into it. If you guys could see how many questions are here and there's a lot that are kind of asking the same things, I think it would just make everyone feel a lot better to know that like you're not alone. These aren't just feelings that you're having. I'm sitting here as a professional. This is what I do, like I train horses, I teach kids, and I still feel nervous at times. And I know that there's a lot of upper level riders that are not just like fearless people. And they definitely can be nervous and timid and like feel like an actual human. 